Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video we're going to start generalizing our physics engine a little bit, because right now we have a very basic working physics engine. If you remember, we can build and run, we see two spheres move towards each other, and they can hit each other and bounce off each other. But it's very specific. We can't have shapes other than spheres. We can't have them do anything other than bounce. And, well, there's a lot we can do to improve the system as it is. So, that's what we're going to start on in this video. Starting with ha having support for more than just spheres in the physics engine. So we can have boxes or planes or whatever other collider we want to support in there. Now, right now, like I said, we just have spheres. So how can we ha make it more general? How can we make it so that we have more than one type of collider? And that's a lot easier said than done. So the way I'm going to do this is we're going to have a generic collider class that all our colliders are going to inherit from. And it's easier if I just show you, so I'm just going to start coding. So this is a collider class, went ahead and created the file off screen like usual. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a private, it's going to be an integer, that I'm going to call m underscore type. And that's going to represent what type of collider we have. And, of course, I'm going to set up getters and constructor off screen. But the big key point here is we're going to have an enumeration for all the types. So, for example, we can have type sphere and type AABB, and of course, at the end, type size, just so we know how big the enumeration is. And this is sort of the way this is going to work. We have our collider class that all our colliders hit and error from, and they're all going to set the type to something. So, no matter what collider we're using, we can always know exactly, well, what type of collider that one is. So yeah, and I'm just going to go ahead and set the constructors and getters for this off screen. Okay, so I went ahead and created the getters, and the constructor off screen, just like I said. And now all we have to do is set up our colliders to inherit from this class and use our new type system. So I'm going to do bounding sphere.h first off, and sure I can leave this open. And for bounding sphere, going to include collider.h, and like I said, everything's going to inherit from collider, so bounding sphere is going to inherit from public collider. And in our constructor, all we should have to change is right here, make it, well, call the super constructor call collider. And we're going to call it with collider colon colon type underscore sphere. So that should tell it that this is a sphere collider, which is exactly what we want. So with that, I believe that's all we have to change with bounding sphere. So in fact, I'm going to do a quick build just to make sure I haven't destroyed anything. And I believe our thing right here should still work. Excellent. So we haven't broken anything, and now we've set up our framework to be a little bit more general. So now for Collider itself, I'm going to include intersect data, because it's going to need one function for now. And this function is very simple. It's going to be intersect data intersect. And it's going to take in const collider reference that I'm going to call other, sure. So this is our big general intersect method that's going to intersect any collider with any other collider. And, well, let's go ahead and implement it. And I'm not going to worry about implementing other colliders right now. I'm just going to do bounding sphere for simplicity. So, yeah. And, it's going to be collider intersect. So, there's a lot of ways you can do this. In the interest of simplicity and just getting something working in this video, I'm just going to do a basic if check. So if m type is equal to type sphere, and other dot get type is equal to type sphere, so I'm checking if they're both spheres. And if this is the case, then what I'm going to do is quite simple. I'm going to say, well, first off, I'm going to create a bounding sphere pointer that I'm going to call self, and that's going to equal cast to a bounding sphere pointer this. So I'm casting this to a bounding sphere pointer. And this is okay, because if 
the type is a bounding sphere, well, that should only be set if it is actually a bounding sphere. So I'm going to actually include bounding sphere.h in here, just so, you know, we have the bounding sphere type. Now after that, I can say self intersect bounding sphere with other. And now other is not a bounding sphere, so we're actually going to have to cast this to a bounding sphere. Actually, I believe you have to cast to a bounding sphere reference. There. Okay, so I went ahead and I added an error message to this. That way, if for some reason we tried doing a collision that is impossible or we don't have implemented just yet, we get an error message other than it just silently failing. Other than that, make sure you're returning the intersect bounding sphere thing here, and also make sure the function is const, both in the CPP file and in the header file, because that's going to be important, otherwise you're going to get error messages. So, in physicsobject.h, we should be able to make a temporary change to colliders. Why temporary? Because we're still stuck using the git bounding sphere thing here, and there's not much we're going to be able to do to that until we implement a more general transform system, but we should be able to get something, at least something working with the more general collider system. So I'm going to make this inline const collider reference. And it's important you're returning a collider reference or pointer rather than just a collider. Because otherwise you're going to discard all the extra information that things like bounding sphere has when in the implicit cast. So be careful about that. Unfortunately, this also means this method right here is not going to work anymore. So temporarily, we're going to, in fact, we can say to do this is temporary, sure. And it's going to be a mutable bounding sphere, we can call m bounding sphere. And in here, I'm going to set m bounding sphere to this. And then I'm going to return inbounding sphere, and that's my new implementation of the function. Now this is going to give us an error, because C++ has a really stupid rule that if any of the members of a class are const, you can't use the assignment operator, unless you override it. Now why? I really don't know. It's never been helpful to me ever, but yeah, so just temporarily I'm going to remove const from bounding sphere's member variables so that we can actually use the assignment operator. And with that, I should now be able to go to fix object h. I believe we're going to have to change the constructor so that it actually initializes in bounding sphere in here. So in bounding sphere, I'm just going to initialize with position and radius. Doesn't really matter. And with all that out of the way, we should be able to build and get an error message. Exactly. Why? Because we haven't changed the physics engine. I was just doing that because I was too lazy to find and click on the file myself. Sorry. <laughs> but really this is easy. Since Git Bounding Sphere is returning a general collider now, all we should have to do is change from to the more general intersect function. So, if we're using the intersect function, all we should have to do now, well, it should work. Yep, as you see, our collision detection system is still working with our more general colliders. Now, of course, this by itself is far from getting to the total fleet general system, but you know what? It's a good start. We now have the framework in place, and from here on out, it's going to be relatively simple to add new colliders to our physics objects. So thank you. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned. And I'll see you in the next video, where we're going to start improving upon this system, making it so we don't have to do this ridiculous mutable bounding sphere hack, and, well, making it so we can support more colliders, just basically generally improving on it. Thank you, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you then.